All right, today we're testing out the uh, new RIP rounds from uh, R2 Research, or G2 Research, rather. And we're also going to be shooting some cheap Blazer FMJs and some Remington Gold Spear hollow points. Our main target is right here. This is a jug of water with pork ribs on either side wrapped in denim to simulate a human torso with clothing. We're going to be shooting out of a uh, Glock 19 first. Alright, now we're going to try out the RIP rounds. See what that does to our human torso model. Clear. Okay, so this is the target we just shot with the RIP rounds. I used my same point of aim as I did with uh, a normal full metal jacket, and the round hit a little low. Uh, I'm not really sure what caused that deviation. We'll get down there and show you. As you can see, it's right here. Penetrated really well. Shredded the ribs, or the, uh, the, the uh, jug, and it exited out the back right here. So now we're going to disassemble the target and show you what damage it did to the ribs. Alright, that should be good enough. All right, we got a uh, good solid entrance hole right there on the ribs. And uh, as you can see, this bottle of water is completely shredded, which is to be expected with a high velocity round. Eric, can you pull out the uh, exit wound? I may have hit too low to actually come into contact. Yeah, I hit too low to come into contact with the other set of ribs. So we're going to try this out again, and I'll use a... Uh, a different point of aim hopefully get a better impact on it all right these are two of the flechettes that we could actually find inside the target from uh, that first round so they did do exactly what the company said they could do and I'm sure that that much of the bullet being stripped off of the solid projectile um, definitely helped disperse the energy a lot more all right so that last round um, it did not penetrate the second set of ribs. It hit a little too low. So we're going to adjust our aim this time. But the last round did, all the flechettes came off of the round and the energy dispersed very well through the, uh, uh, the water jug itself. It had multiple holes through it. So this time we're going to try and hit center mass, get it to go through both sets of ribs, and see how much more damage that does on exit. Filming? That one worked. I think this one was successful. As you can see, there's a hole right there for your entrance. If you look back here, those are your flechettes stuck into the tire. Right there, right there, and right there. They stuck in, they did not penetrate. And there's meat down here, so I'm anxious to see what this uh, exit wound looks like. It also shredded the side of the jeans right there so definitely good energy dispersion and those flechettes definitely did some damage so let's see what we got here this is just sliding right out you can see blood from the pork and it, it always oh, shredded this thing really good energy dispersion though where's the back side of ribs And once again, oh, there we go, very small exit hole right there. That's obviously just from the solid projectile behind the flechettes, which means that energy was dispersed very well. 
All right, so we got our ribs back to the staging area here. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but you can definitely see how this went straight through bone. And you can see how the blade, the flechettes on the front, did exactly what they were intended to do. They cut through it just like a saw. And then we'll flip it over. Look at the damage there. That's pretty good. Now, it may look like these ribs are frozen solid, but they're actually not. They're just covered in snow because we've dropped them a few times. So this is actual raw meat, just like shooting a human body. Okay, and this is the back side of the meat here. As you can see, the exit went directly through the bone as well. So we got real good penetration going on, and I'm pretty sure had this... Uh, round hit a little bit more soft tissue if I had had ballistic gel or something like that you'd see a larger exit wound but being that we are on a budget this is the best we can do and I think this is actually a pretty good indication of what those rounds can do this is the Remington Gold Spear hollow point it's a plus P round and uh, we're gonna test that see how it does compared to the uh, new radically invasive projectiles. Get my ears on. Bless, they're fogging. Let me get rid of my crutches. Damn. Alright, so we just shot the Remington Gold Spear, and it completely shredded the jeans. Knocked the rib straight out of the paradenum, and, uh, no, that's not the same. That's, that's the hole from the, uh, other ones. It didn't penetrate the second set of ribs. Hmm. Oh, it just nicked the edge. You can see where it took a chunk out. All right. Messed up the uh, the jug pretty good. Obviously tore up the jeans. These things are destroyed. And right there, very small hole. That is actually the exit wound right there. Very small exit wounds, smaller than the uh, exit wounds from the RIP rounds. So, looks like more energy was uh, given, but smaller exit wound, smaller entrance room wound. All right, so right here was the exit wound for the uh, uh, Remington Gold Spears, and then this little nick right here out of the side was the entrance wound. It did break the bone, but it's a uh, small. There's definitely a smaller permanent wound channel from the Remington Gold Spears than there was from the radically invasive projectile. That being said, there was more energy on the target, but I believe that that's less energy dispersed through the target and more of a blunt force impact. That's why the uh, everything exploded the way that it did. So. We, we still got pieces of flechette stuck to it. This right here, this was our best shot with the uh, RIP rounds. As you can see, it's a much larger wound channel than what the, uh, even on this side, I can almost fit my finger through there. Um, it's a much larger wound channel than the Remington Gold Spears. Alright, we're about to do our test with the full metal jackets, and since we have completely destroyed the legs of the jeans, we are now going to use the upper part of the jeans, and we had to use electrical tape to hold it in place. Um, yeah, th those rounds did some damage to the jeans that we've already used. So we still have our ribs, we still have our water jug, and then another set of ribs down in there. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a good look at what a full metal jacket will do to a human torso model. Hit the... 
All right, we're tearing apart this most recent target that we just shot with the full metal jacket. Let's see what kind of damage she did. That was it. Yep. All right. As you can see, this was the hole from our gold spear right there. This is the hole from the FMJ. It went straight through, decent wound cavity, but didn't really mushroom out or tear up the meat or bone very much. It just kind of punched through, which is what's to be expected from a full metal jacket. Got our hole in the denim right here. It uh, shredded one clean line through the uh, uh, jug. We got some meat stuck in there. That's a good sign. Wow. Look at that hole. My guess would be the projectile was tumbling from the uh, hitting the bone on the other side. And it, it shredded a good hole through there. That's actually impressive for a full metal jacket. Okay, so you have just watched my video of the G2 Research radically invasive projectile. We compared the uh, the RIP round to the Blazer Brass full metal jacket and the um, Gold Spear from Remington. Um, I know the test could have been better. That's probably going to be a common comment on here. But due to budget restrictions, we couldn't afford ballistic gel or more sets of ribs or a high-speed camera so that we could actually see the shock wave from each round and uh, how the temporary wound cavity expanded. Um, that would have made it a lot better, but just couldn't afford to do it. Um, now the full metal jackets, you saw the, the round had tumbled and had um, shredded through the second set of ribs on its exit. Um, th this does happen, but it's not very common when uh, you're shooting a full metal jacket. Most of the time, the full metal jacket is just going to punch through very quickly and is not going to do much damage at all. Um, if it does create a large cavity, that's probably going to just be on the exit wound right at the surface of a body rather than being part of the temporary or e even the permanent wound channel or temporary wound channel. They're, they're both going to be small. It's going to be about nine millimeters in diameter because the round doesn't mushroom. It doesn't expand and just um, doesn't do quite as much damage. That's why we use hollow points, especially in a nine millimeter. So, the RIP round versus the Gold Spear. Gold Spear from Remington is a tried and true hollow point, very good personal defense round. The RIP rounds are new. Uh, it did appear that the Gold Spear may have done a little bit more damage. Um, I, it, it'd be easier to tell if we had that high speed camera and the ballistics gel, but judging by the way that the water jug split and the fact that the um, cavities in the entrance and exit wound were very small in diameter, uh, especially for a hollow point. I'm thinking that uh, there, there was a lot more blunt force trauma on the outside of the target as it immediately hit than as opposed to the RIP round where it penetrated and then expanded and the flechettes came off. And there, there was more energy dispersion through the target itself. Both of these are very effective. Uh, it, it comes down to personal preference, really. Both of these are man stoppers. Neither one of those rounds went through the target and penetrated through the tire behind it. Both stuck into the tire, about the same depth. So you're looking at roughly the same amount of penetration without over-penetrating and risking in a home defense type situation going through walls and accidentally hurting family members in other rooms. Um, they, they're both very effective rounds. I personally like the idea that the RIP round has nine separate permanent wound channels. And some people say, well, 
well, why does it matter? Those flechettes are very small. It's not going to create a very large permanent wound channel. But if you put that round close to a vital organ, but don't hit it, those flechettes will. And the heart, the brain, the lungs don't know the difference between a tiny little flechette and a 45. I personally prefer the RIPs, but obviously there are advantages to the Gold Spear. It is a great round. I'm still going to carry a magazine of Gold Spears as well as the RIPs. But I hope this was a good demonstration of what these can do. Now some of you might be asking, why can we trust this guy? What do I know? Well, I am not a trained firearms expert in the civilian sense. I have spent almost seven years in the Army, as did my counterpart that you saw briefly in the video. We're both infantrymen. We've served two tours in Afghanistan. And we know very much what it takes to put down an enemy with a round. What makes them good, what makes them bad, and what you're looking for when a round hits a human body. I've got many firearms. Um, I've trained a lot with them, and I've done pretty extensive research on internal and external ballistics. I know what I'm talking about. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, there will be an email address at the end of this video where you can address all of those. Thanks for watching.